Hey yo. What's up? Um, I knew that when I made a couple of videos that uh, ISO was not exposure, which it's not. And uh, the fact that ISO is not sensitivity, which it's not, that some people go, rah, 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 rah. well, you know, film's got a grain, and, you know, everybody, those are the people that uh, disagree, and I, I shot film for ages, <laughs> I didn't have any issue with it, um, I guess because I tra transitioned in over a long period of time, right, um, you know, film grain, ISO, well, that's understandable, and that's actual, you know, that's actual gain. But, you know, we don't have a bunch of film anymore of various ISOs. We have got a single sensor. And uh, you should investigate uh, ISO-less sensors or uh, ISO invariants. Um, by the way, this is the reason why Canon sucks. Canon's uh, ISO invariants, uh, depending on the model, is uh, nil to pretty good but never great like it is on Fuji. Actually, many people actually rate the Fuji X-T1 as the best iso -less sensor system uh, that there is out there. Nikon, D750, D810, number of Nikons are uh, ISO invariant. It means that, uh, while obviously it's no fun to chimp on a picture that's like completely black, it's like, oh, let me check, uh, you know, let me chimp on my pic. You know, you can't see anything. You can add all that applied gain. ISO is applied gain um, in post. Okay, so where does that come in? What ways could I use this to my advantage? And, uh, you know, what sort of issues does this cause? Well, you can think in terms of clipping, if you know the range of your camera, or if you've got a good enough eye, you can see, well, I'm going to take this shot, but I've got this really, really bright spot over here, and if I expose for 80% of everything that's here, then I'm going to have, you know, issues that are blown up there. Well, so what? You don't expose for that. You don't. You expose a stop or stop and a half, depending on what the range is, for your highlights. And you chimp on the picture, you'll see perfectly exposed a bright highlight, for example, up here, maybe. And everything else down here will be uh, very gray or black. So what? You can take care of it in post. Um, you know, this is uh, a different form of dynamic range, if you will. You can actually apply adaptive ISO post-processing uh, during raw conversion, and this is also the reason why it's so important to be shooting never JPEGs, but uh, digital negatives, i.e. raw files, and have a good uh, raw uh, conversion engine. Like uh, with Fuji, if you're not using a Radiant developer, you're not getting the best results. Um, with Nikon, Lightroom, you know, no big deal. Everybody's using Lightroom or Photoshop or Capture One. Uh, most people are using... Uh, uh, Lightroom, obviously. So, so then the question becomes: Is when do you and don't you want to use high ISO? Well, what sort of clipping issues do you have? I mean, you know, you can raise things up, but if you've got a bunch of blown highlights and you, uh, you know, exposed for 80% of the scene, and uh, you know, you didn't take into account the highlights, you need to be able to envision the scene and understand how your camera works so that you're exposing. Uh, properly, you can either do it at exposure the best you can by saying exposing for the highlights and opening, uh, opening up uh, an additional two stops so you don't blow your highlight. But what about if you have the ability, unless it's an action shot or something that you can't, you know, uh, immediately take an additional shot of a landscape and you can sit there and, uh, you know, tinker all you want and uh, pick the best shot uh, in front of your computer. But, you know, it's not always the case that you can do that. You need to be able to evaluate scenes on the fly and pre-predict what sort of lighting conditions are going to be when a race car comes around the corner or a basketballer comes down the, you know, what is it that you think you're going to need to expose for without blowing the highlights? You know, say for example, you're uh, inside of a church, and I've encountered this a number of times, and you got beautiful stained glass windows, and the inside of the church is dark, you know, even if the lights are on, compared to the streaming light, that's coming through the windows, the dynamic range is too far between the pews and uh, the light coming in through the stained glass windows. Now what can you do? Well, I'm going to stick my camera on the tripod and then I'm going to do uh, some HDR photography. Well, why don't you do some adaptive ISO post-processing and lighten up uh, the shadows. You can just expose for the stained glass windows or a stop or stop and a half 
uh, above the spot metering for the stained glass windows and everything down here you're not going to see it you know chimping on the back of your LCD it's, windows will look perfect everything down here will be black well you underexposed for 80% no you didn't this is the reason why too that you know some of these people that were arguing with me that the uh, ISO um, is either exposure and or sensitivity are just flat out wrong I mean anybody with a mind should be able to know that you can pull the same image you know, uh, out of your computer, if you shoot an ISO 1600, for example, uh, then you did a shooting an ISO 6400 uh, on the computer. Then it has nothing to do, obviously, with the actual exposure or the sensitivity in the camera. If you've removed the SD card and you can sit there and you can make an ISO uh, 1600 shot look exactly the same as uh, a shot in the camera at ISO 6400, except it's all done in the computer, then obviously ISO has nothing to do with sensitivity, has nothing to do with uh, exposure. Uh, some of the people that uh, you know wanted to bicker with me on that, it's like I showed them a link. It's like, well, that's not enough. Show me another link. It's like, well, there's another link saying the exact same thing. Well, that's not enough. You know, there's another one. I mean, how many do you want me to post? So you need to be able to understand, and it's kind of confusing for people because ISO invariants or ISO list sensors are relatively new, but not really. I mean, they've been around for many years, but people don't take that into consideration. They want to be able to see something halfway decent on the back of their LCD, and it doesn't have to be that way. If you have too much dynamic range in the composition of what you're shooting, expose for what you need to and let everything else, if it falls within a range of five, six stops, depends on the camera, obviously. And if you're using an iso -less camera, this is why you shouldn't be shooting Canon, you know, are you going to say, well, I'm going to expose for everything down here, and then I'm going to hope and pray that everything is up there is okay. Well, what you've done when you do that is that you've exposed for 80% of the scenes, but the most beautiful part of the composition is the, the stained glass window, and then you've blown it. Oh, yeah, the highlights are, you know, it's blown. Hmm, so what would ISO be like? What would exposure be like? It's really, really funky analogies. They're kind of the simple things that stick in my brain. It seems to be, from psychological terms, the same things that stick in other people's brains is, uh, you know, goofy stuff you remember, like someone has a last name that sounds like turd, or, you know, it's like, I remember that guy's name because it sounds like turd. Um, goofy little analogies. I mean, well, you know, what is ISO? We have this notion of an exposure triangle. Aperture, shutter, and ISO. And therefore, that's the exposure triangle, but it's not. Um, but shutter, I mean, the ISO lets you, uh, obviously, adjust your shutter, lets you adjust. Some of this stuff is like people rolling their eyes. Uh, they might not, uh, you know, they, they understand this very well, and so I'm just repeating, you know, preaching to the choir. But a lot of people don't, because I had a lot of people come back, and they're just like, ISO is definitely exposure, it's sensitivity. No, it's not. You know, if you want to talk about uh, exposure or sensitivity of the shot, it only has to do with your aperture, your shutter, and the size of the photo site. The actual genuine sensitivity of the camera when it was made. Whether it's an ISO uh, list uh, sensor, i.e. it's an ISO uh, invariant or not. Uh, all of those have to do with the actual exposure sensitivity. How you expose for the shot. What you know you can do if you're shooting raw files, which you should, you should always be shooting anyway. What you can do with it in post-process. You, you can apply um, adaptive exposure. Keep your uh, highlights, your specular the same, but raise your mid-tones and uh, raise your shadows as you want in Lightroom or Photoshop. Well, I mean, this is exposure. This is shutter speed and aperture right here. So what the hell is ISO? When I take a shot one one hundredth of a second at f4, this is the exposure with given size photo sites. Okay, so where the hell does ISO come in? This is flat. This is underexposed. You know. If you'd uh, shot this in uh, program mode or puss mode, the camera would have demanded a higher ISO or a, uh, you know, a slower shutter or a uh, you know, wider aperture. Well, this is fine. I mean, it's uh, four stops under, but I have some specular highlights here. I'm inside the church. I expose for this, but everything down here is black. You know, I expose it because I know I can take care of this in post. Well, what's the difference in sticking the camera in program mode with the same shutter with the same aperture, having auto ISO, for example, you still have the same shutter, you still have the same aperture, but you stuck the camera in auto ISO, you got the exact same exposure as this. The only difference is the difference between this and... Oh, it's the same exposure, but we've applied gain. 
Oh, and now we've got proper exposure. Underexposed? No, no, it wasn't underexposed. It just wasn't enough gain. Let's apply some ISO, some gain. Oh, that's what ISO is. It's applied gain. Yeah, hmm. You know, when you kind of explain it that way, it seems kind of simple. Yeah, it is kind of simple. ISO is not sensitivity, nor is ISO um, exposure. Um, and if you start shifting or moving around your thinking uh, from ISO in terms of light gathering, which is kind of the way it used to be back in the old days, you stuck in, well, I'm going to go shoot some dark crap in the middle of the night. I'm going to slap in some ISO 1600. Then I'm going to have to, you know, think about my lighting, you know, my shutter speed and my aperture. Things were kind of simple until he went to go process the damn film and then print it out and deal with all the chemicals and, you know, the heck with that. So you shift your thinking around in terms of uh, not ISO, but in terms of gathering light, you can be uh, a lot more attentive uh, intellectually so far as creating quality pictures that, uh, you know, if you don't want grainy, you know, I've got nothing, no issues with grainy pictures. I mean, grainy portraitures and grainy nudes, I mean, they're, they're, they're incredible, they're beautiful. There's nothing wrong with grain, but if you don't want it and it's there, I mean, it's what do you want? So... I said ISO is applied gain of the received signal that is captured by the sensor, not the signal of the light itself. So I hope that made that uh, kind of clear. And then you need to think about, you know, when do you and when do you not want to use high ISO? ISO should only be increased as compensation for the handheld necessity, camera shake, or for effect. ISO should be considered as no alternative. You know, you got no alternative. You know, I'm going to crank up my ISO. You got no alternative. You didn't bring my monopod, didn't bring my tripod. You got no alternative. Or as a no resort left crutch. Well, that's kind of wrong to call it a crutch, but you got no resort left crutch. Um, you know, not as a necessity. You know, you crank up the ISO as you need it. ISO is not. A, uh, you know, a replacement for actual exposure, actual uh, applied illumination. It's just not. Um, SNR firmware and AD converters have gotten a lot better. I mean, uh, APS-C uh, high ISO has gotten really good in the past few years, but there's still no replacing the, uh, you know, if you want to sit here and say, well, you know, I got some camera shake or whatever, you know, obviously that's a necessity. But if you don't have camera shake and you're like, I want a little bit faster, I'm going to crank the ISO, you know, way, way up, and then I'm going to, you know, raise my shutter speed way, way up, then all you're doing is applying a bunch of gain, but you're choking, ah, 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 you're choking the camera of the necessary light. Well, I'm going to stop down my aperture, and then I'm going to raise my shutter speed, but I'm going to take my ISO and go, wah. Well, that's great. But all you've done is choke your camera of actual light and taking the little bit of light that's actually coming through and going Wah! So, let me see. SISO is not sensitivity, nor is it exposure. Thank you for watching, and I will catch you later. Bye! <laughs>